the special representative of the African Union United Nations Mission in Darfur, Jeremiah Mamabolo, says the situation in the region is not the same as it was in 2003. While addressing the Security Council via teleconference from Darfur, Mr. Mamabolo says that there is a general absence of war in Darfur. The Darfur conflict, which broke out in 2003, has led to the deaths of tens of thousands of people and the displacement of nearly two million others. The special representative of the African Union UN mission in Darfur, Jeremiah Mamabolo, has told the Security Council of the persisting stalemate in the Darfur peace process, despite the effort to persuade the parties to the conflict to sign agreement and begin direct negotiations. I therefore call upon your respective countries to use your bilateral channels to exhort the parties to the Darfur conflict to sign cessation of hostilities agreements and resume negotiations, including to use leverage with Abdul Wahid to prevail upon him to acknowledge the futility of war and to join the peace process. That would be the only way the people of Darfur and indeed the international community could have any realistic hope for the achievement of durable peace in Darfur. Mama Bola also reported that the mission has started phase two of its reconfiguration, including the redeployment of uniformed and civilian personnel to strengthen the Jebel Mara task force's operations. In a nutshell, Mr. President, they say there is relative peace and stability. They commend UNAMIT for contributing to the state of affairs, and they acknowledge the positive impact of the civilian weapons collection exercise initiated by the government. There have nevertheless been some complaints from some members of the IDP communities relating to their perceived lack of fairness of the civilian weapons collection exercise. However, the special representative called on the council to invest in post-conflict reconstruction and development in Darfur. In his reply, the Sudanese ambassador Omar Dahab Fadl Mohammed says there is nothing left of the conflict in Darfur except for its after effect including the issue of internally displaced people and development issues related to the peace-building efforts. The people and government of Sudan are now on the verge of a new phase of peace, stability and serious efforts towards achieving the desired development, both in Darfur and all across the country. The African Union-United Nations hybrid operation in Darfur is a joint African Union and United Nations peacekeeping mission formally approved by United Nations Security Council Resolution 1769 on the 31st of July 2007. It is meant to bring stability to the war-torn Darfur region of Sudan while peace talks on a final settlement continue. In East Africa, the United Nations Humanitarian Chief Mark Lowcock has appealed to the international community for more financial support for displaced people in the Democratic Republic of Congo as the number of those displaced by violence increases. Since the last quarter of 2017, violence carried out by armed groups in DR Congo has led to a rise in the number of displaced to more than 4.5 million due to lack of funding and access. A majority of displaced people are yet to receive assistance. The United Nations Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordinator Mark Lowcock and the Netherlands Minister for Foreign Trade and Development Cooperation Sigrid Kag wrapped up a two day mission to the Democratic Republic of the Congo by visiting two camps for internally displaced people in Kalili, the southeastern province of Tanganyika. Lowcock and CAG visited the Katanika and Kalunga displacement sites where they spoke with some of over 13,000 people who live there after fleeing ethnic violence. The situation is very bad and the single biggest problem we have is we're short of funds to meet the needs of these people. According to the United Nations Refugee Agency, Congo's Tanganyika province has seen a sharp escalation of violence since late last year with new armed groups forming and increasing attacks and the use of firearms. 
The conflict is part of a worsening humanitarian crisis in Congo. Appealing this year for $1.7 billion uh, for humanitarian assistance in Congo, that's twice as much as we appealed for last year because the problem is twice as bad. More than 13 million people in Congo need humanitarian assistance and 4.5 million have been forced to flee their homes as a result of fighting in other parts of the country. The European Commission, the Netherlands and the United Arab Emirates are scheduled to co-host the first ever humanitarian donor conference for DR Congo next month to address the growing humanitarian crisis in the country. Kenya, a nurse has admitted that she was the one who sent a wrong patient for brain surgery, but she blames a heavy workload for the mistake. Mary Wahome told a parliamentary committee she only realized the mistake after surgeons called the ward to say they could not find the blood clot hours into the operation. The mix-up at Nairobi's Kenyatta National Hospital made headlines across the world after it emerged earlier this month. The surgeons operated on a man believing he had a blood clot on the brain. However, the man who ended up on the table, Samuel Wachia, only needed a non-invasive treatment for swelling. The mix-up has reportedly left Mr. Wachia with memory loss. In South Africa, a group with the name March Against Fake Pastors have taken to the streets of Johannesburg to protest against what they term the ills in today's church brought by some men of God. While the martyrs allege that intimidation, exploitation, extortion and sexual abuse have become the order of the day and not much is being done to protect the vulnerable in the congregation. They submitted a memorandum of demands to the South African Cultural, Religious and Linguistics Rights Commission. <laughs> They are mostly young, active Christians, but they have a bone to pick with the church. Day by day, you know, we hear people who have been victimized by, by prophets in the church, false prophets in the church, sexually abused, manipulated, money taken from them. And, and, and there's just no place to run to. No one is really championing their cause. Their placards say it all. Among them are alleged victims of friends and families of alleged victims of church leadership. I'm actually one of the examples that I'll say today, my house has been turned apart. Why is it been turned apart or, I mean, divorced? Why? Because of a prophecy that was made by, uh, by prophet. I tried to go and approach him to speak to him in terms of how can we resolve this because he is actually the one who created the problem. But unfortunately, he's refusing to meet with me. He's expecting me to pay him 7000 for the meeting. Their march ended at the South African Human Rights Commission where they presented a memorandum to the head of the Cultural, Religious and Linguistic Rights Commission, Mrs. Togum Gwanazi Kaluva, who herself has had running legal battles with some religious leaders. We've been preaching this gospel since 2050. We kept on saying there's something extremely wrong happening here. Yeah. Yeah. The response has always been there's freedom of religion. We have said every right in the Constitution has limitations. And we are saying what is in this memorandum today is where limitations start. Yeah. We hope the government and we hope the Human Rights Commission, the CRA Rights Commission, would be able to say, hey, we need to take this serious, maybe take it to the parliament and say there's a problem within the church. And if the church is not being able to handle it, then unfortunately, uh, the government have, ha, you know, has to handle it. But I would love to see the church handling its own problem. To continue to discuss these issues, the South African Cultural, Religious and Linguistic Rights Commission will on Friday hold a session with stakeholders on what is a church and when does it cross the line to become a cult. From Johannesburg, South Africa, Betty Dibia, Channels Television News. Still to come on the program, South Africa dismisses Australia's allegations that its white farmers are persecuted. Do stay with us.